Yeah, it's true. I might quit selling tractors. I'm sure some of you thought I already did given how few tractors I've had on the website recently. This is going to be a little bit of the business insider, where my business is headed. I'm going to tell you more about it now. And today's video is brought to you by Bora Wheel Spacers. If you are feeling tippy on your tractor, side to side, Bora Wheel Spacers can make a big difference. Make sure you check them out at the link below. All right, so there's a lot of reasons that are going into the lack of tractors that are on my website, and it's not because the demand is not there. I am asked, I have requests coming in all the time, hey, what's wrong with your website? It's not working properly for me. There's one tractor on there, or two tractors, or have we had zero? I don't know if we had, have we had zero tractors on there, Chris? I don't think so. No, so we've been down to one though. We've been really close, all right? And it's been that way for much of the pandemic. You know, it's only gotten progressively worse. And so the main reason for that is increased demand across the board, across the nation. You know, you have to do a little bit of trying to connect the dots there to see what the reason is that's driving all of that. But a lot of folks are working from home, right? Which means you have more free time. You know, you can get your work done, go out, knock out a couple projects here or there. I thought about it even this morning, actually, when I was waking up, you know, going back years ago when I used to drive in and go to work. That was 40 minutes every day that were just sucked up. Can you imagine just having however many extra minutes that is a week just to do something else with your time. So the ability for so many more folks to be working from home frees up that commute time. You know, it, it just frees up the downtime, right? You can do a little bit of work after the kids go to bed if you want to, knock out a project during the day. Okay, so that I think is one of the big reasons that's driving demand up. And so for me, my business is based on used tractors. I'm not a new tractor dealer. I don't carry new John Deere, new Kubota, new anything else. And so for me, the majority of my tractor inventory are trade-ins from John Deere, Kubota dealers, just the other new OEM dealers of the world. And so when somebody trades their used tractor in, and yeah, sometimes, a lot of times, those only have 50 or 100 hours on them when they're getting maybe a bigger one, or maybe they're getting a smaller one, or one with a cab, or Maybe they're just getting a UTV because they didn't use their tractor. Whatever the reason is, that's how I would get my inventory from all over the country. And so that means for there to be a used tractor available for me to purchase, there needs to be a new tractor for that old owner to purchase, right? And so a lot of you can relate, right? So if you're shopping for a new vehicle, if you're trying to get a new appliance for your house, anything that has to do with manufacturing is experiencing severe delays because if one component, just one, is delayed, that means the whole product is delayed. And so for whatever strange magical reason demand is sky high across every industry, the same thing is happening in the tractor world. And so the new inventory has been depleted across the country, right? It's very hard to get a new tractor. You can still find them here and there. There's gonna be random ones, of course. And so overall, that means it's very hard to get a new tractor. And so this compounds the issue. That means number one, a lot more folks are going to the used market to try to find something that they can get immediately instead of having to wait maybe three, six, nine, 12 months or even longer for certain pieces of equipment. And so while that was good for me in the beginning because I had used inventory and that's where folks were coming, well, once that was depleted, it was very hard for me to replenish. And so the reason it was hard for me to replenish is because I'm sourcing the majority of my tractors from, again, those dealers that are selling brand new. And if customers can't trade them in because they can't get a new one, well, there's nothing for me to buy either. And so fortunately, I do have a fair share of folks that will reach out to me from time to time and, and ask me to buy their tractor. Maybe they had something in life happen, a, a life change that they just no longer need the tractor or they can no longer use it. Um, you know, there are times when a dealer you know, a John Deere Kubota dealer won't give them enough and they want to try to sell it uh, to a, a person like me, a reseller instead. So I always have bought those from time to time, but I've been trying to buy a few more whenever I can, but it's still tough to make the numbers work. And speaking of numbers, that's a whole other subject and something that I used to have a very good handle on, a very good grip. You know, I had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of data points for tractors that I'd sold, you know, pretty much every compact model in the modern era across the board, whether it was John Deere, Kubota, you know, all sorts of hours, configurations. I had this data available that I could use for myself and be confident that I could sell for the same amount, give or take a little bit one way or the other. There's no NADA or KBB for tractors like there are for vehicles, like there are for boats and ATVs and all sorts of other equipment. And so, you can go to a place, and I still do, go to a place like Tractor House or Machine Repeat. Basically, they're like the auto trader of the tractor world, right? So you can hopefully have a good idea. You can plug your model in and get a, a bunch of results with different hours, configurations, that kind of thing, and get some different data points. It's not gonna be the exact same thing. It can be regional as well, and, and condition, and just little options that might be on there could affect the price. But 
it can get you started. Well, all that stuff is out the window now, right? Because there's not nearly as many listings that are on those websites anymore. I mean, certain models still have them just because they're very popular, but it's very hard to figure out because prices are all over the board. They've been climbing insane. They're going through the roof over the last 12 months, maybe 18 months, uh, pretty much since the pandemic started. And it's getting very challenging to try to figure out how much you can sell a tractor for and how much you have to pay for it. I'm paying more than I ever have paid before. I'm I'm actually paying more than I've ever sold tractors for before, and that's kind of scary. I'm selling tractors for closer and closer to new pricing, and oftentimes for the same price that these were paid for just a couple of years ago, and that's all because of the crazy increases in material costs that are just going through the roof. Steel is something that I've seen certain attachments go 50% higher than they were a year or 18 months ago, 50% higher. And so if you couple those rising material costs Shoot, you look at um, John Deere's negotiations recently with their labor union, those costs are going up and that cost goes into the product cost as well. But you couple all of those kinds of costs along with increased demand that is just unsatisfiable right now. There's, there's no amount of supply that is going to satisfy the demand and you're gonna have a situation like we have. And so for me, as a reseller of used equipment, that is getting to a point of risk that I'm getting marginally uncomfortable with. You know, I'm pretty confident in what I do and that I can always make a buck, right? This is my own money that I'm investing and that I'm, you know, gambling on. Well, it's not really a gamble, right? It's an educated risk, right? We all make informed decisions or we should. And maybe it's just me, but I am, I'm good with slow change, right? With slow differences, but we've had a pretty accelerated and drastic change in the market in the last year. And it is a, it's an unsettling feeling every time I buy a tractor and wondering, am I really gonna be able to get X amount of money out of it to be able to cover my costs and still make some profit? And so I've been thinking about how to handle that, what to do with that. And so part of the reason you're not seeing many tractors on my website is not because I'm, I'm not offered tractors. I still am offered tractors on a fairly regular basis, but I'm not that confident that I'm gonna make money on most of those tractors. So I've been trying to figure out how I'm gonna handle now, right, and, and the future. I don't really see this getting better for a while. And I think as a, as a consumer, you know, as you guys, as, as just a buyer, me, and a lot of other industries, I'm not putting off making purchases right now. I think that the folks that are saying to do so are just wishful thinking. I don't think the demand and supply is gonna change much. I don't think prices are ever gonna go down to what they were. Yeah, there could be a correction at some point, but that's gonna be temporary and it's not gonna get us down to where we were at two years ago. That's just not gonna happen. And so for me, that's why I think it's just time to get on board and ride it out. Um, that's why we're moving forward with building a house right now where prices are higher, right? But we could wait our life away and <laughs> our, our kids are growing up, you know? If we wait years to see what happens with the market and maybe save a little bit of money, down the road, well, what good is that if time has gone by? The moment has passed. And so I've thought about some ways to handle this for my business, and uh, I did actually, I think in the last six months, experiment a couple of times with this, but I, I actually offered consignment on my website for tractors. So again, it got back to uh, a lot of the folks that will reach out to me and say, hey, I gotta sell my tractor, I wanna sell it, or whatever it is. And instead of me buying it outright, you know, we've kept the tractor at wherever it is, New York or Illinois or, wherever the location might be. And instead I'll get pictures, a lot of pictures and information and have back and forth conversations to get a comfortable feel from the customer, but then allow them to negotiate, right? I'll essentially be that auto trader of the tractor world and have it listed on my website, but it'll allow you to do the negotiations directly with that seller. And I'll just take a flat fee and maybe that is the way that things go in the future. Now, I'm not 100% sure how to really work out all of those logistics, you know, if there's legal ramifications, um, responsibility, all that kind of stuff. I wanna make sure I'm doing the right thing, you know, but I have a huge exposure to the compact tractor world, right? So if I can find a logical, reasonable way to make all of that work and provide a lot of exposure to customers that are looking to buy compact tractors, then that could be a win-win with less risk for me. And so really I put myself in a little bit of a pickle because that is what my business was originally founded on, was selling used tractors. And we covered it recently too, but I have been transitioning to tractor attachments, selling those of all kinds for the three point and the front end loader. And, um, and that's for several reasons. You know, uh, number one, I would say I like to sell brand new equipment if I can. And the used tractors that I sell are 
Well, a lot of folks think they're brand new. I mean, I try to sell very nice, clean, low hour equipment. I don't want to sell junk. That's just not my thing. You know, I don't want to be sitting there wrenching on a bunch of stuff. And we get tractors in sometimes that do have issues and we'll take it into the John Deere or the Kubota dealer and have it fixed. I just want things to be the right way. And so obviously if you have brand new attachments, <laughs> the likelihood of things not being the right way is going way down. And so that in itself makes life a lot easier. You know, new equipment is typically easier to buy in bulk or in large quantities, large volume as well, right? You can't go out and just, you know, buy 20 used quick hitches somewhere. I mean, who's sitting on 20 used quick hitches? It's a random thing, right? But buying new quick hitches, new snow pushers, new rototillers, I can buy all of that kind of stuff in volume and it is a learning curve right now. You know, lead times are very, very long, six months, nine months, 12 months, depends what it is. Good luck getting something in a couple months. But we're in the fourth major transition between um, the summer months and the winter months. And so starting to get into that groove of planning ahead. And if the manufacturers can just please do their part to try to keep things semi on track and not make those lead times extend further, then we're gonna have that dialed in. And beyond all that, we talked about the increased demand for tractors. Well, just think about how many folks have tractors and how many new tractor owners are out there and how many existing tractor owners are out there. So the market for tractor attachments is, I would guess 500 to 1,000 times the size of the market for just selling a used tractor. And so the opportunities are just exponential with the tractor attachments, especially the fact that I don't even know. Maybe you guys could answer. This is a good question. Leave a comment down below. How many attachments do you own for your tractor? Because if you're looking for a tractor, you're buying just one typically, right? But if you own a tractor and need attachments, well, I mean, I, I got a lot of attachments myself. And so it also allows me to kind of focus and naturally fit new attachments that I'm coming out with as well, like the stump bucket and the Versa bracket, those hitch hangers. We've got some others that haven't worked out and some more in the pipeline too, but it's, helping me fold into the mix these other innovations that I want to come out with. And then naturally, it's an opportunity for me to make all sorts of videos, create all sorts of content, showing these tools, these different attachments at work, you know, on any tractor, right? On a John Deere, Kubota, an LS, a Coyote, a Mahindra, I, whatever it is, right? They will work with anything that's out there. And so it's, it's widening it beyond just the John Deere and the Kubota market base. And so that again is widening my sales opportunities. And so really business is an evolution and Sometimes that seems obvious and then sometimes you only realize it when you're reflecting and looking back. And so that's a mixture of both for me and, and for me, it's just become second nature. You gotta roll with things and I think we're all getting accustomed to that, that nothing is gonna stay the same. And so if you expect things to be the same way they were a year or two ago, well, that's just wishful thinking. You know, I, I wouldn't hold my breath. And so really this is meant to be a video kind of informing you about more of my business, where it's going, what it's about, but it's also to be encouraging for you guys that are looking to get started in your own business, or maybe you're at a, at a tipping point, you're not sure what way to go. I mean, you gotta be confident in your decisions. And so I'm still not gonna put all my eggs in one basket. I'm gonna diversify a little bit, you know, move it around. We talked about it in a recent video, the six different ways that my business makes money. And so that's the reason why. The same way you can't expect to go back to the way things were in the past is also the way that you can't predict what's gonna happen in the future. So. To put all your eggs in one basket, for me, is too risky. I gotta keep it spread around a little bit. All right, so am I gonna quit selling tractors? Gosh, I hate to think so, but I will tell you, it is not a primary focus of my business right now. So you're probably gonna see things a little light on inventory, and it's gonna be very challenging to go out there and seek and find a specific tractor, a specific setup that you're looking for. I would encourage you to look far and wide, leave no stone unturned, look at Facebook Marketplace, probably check out Craigslist, I haven't been on there much recently. You know, keep tabs on Tractor House and on Machine Repeat and the other uh, big conglomerates as well, but if you find something that meets your needs, that is set up the way you want, do not wait. It is likely to be sold very quickly and there is gonna be very little chance that a similar setup is showing up the next day. So whether you buy your tractor from us or not, I can likely still help with all those attachments that you're gonna need down the road, again, for the three-point hitch or the front end loader. So make sure you give us a shot, goodworkstractors.com. We have a great website, e-commerce, so you can buy right on there. We include shipping and pretty much all of our pricing so we can send it right to you as well. And we also have a pretty cool Cool subsection on that website called the GWT Discount Club and that's gonna be a compilation of vendors that we work with that we partner with that sell all sorts of great accessories and attachments for your tractors you can typically save 5% sometimes more by using code GWT make sure you check it out so if you enjoyed today's video I'd love to get a thumbs up from you and if you want to see more videos we have hundreds I think we're over 400 videos now 
of tractor and tractor attachment videos, projects going on. So make sure you check them out. Hit that subscribe button down below to see the new ones coming out as well. And if you guys didn't know, we also have a Facebook page. So we do try to post a lot of stuff on YouTube, but sometimes it's only gonna be on Facebook. So if you haven't checked that out, I'd encourage you to whether you like our page on there, like our page or follow us, whatever you gotta do on Facebook. Thanks for taking time out of your day to stop by and until next time, stay safe, we'll see you soon.